Well, hello everyone. Awesome, I can see you guys in the chat. Can you hear me and see me okay? I always have to ask that because it's always nerve wracking going live because you think that you're gonna be talking to no one. So if you can do that, that would be really great. I know that there's always a delay on the feed, so your comments always come a little bit late for me, um, but if you can tell me uh, what's going on for you, that's great. I can see you in the chat. I know, Cole PEI. Okay, so I have something to tell you. We are having a little bit of a winter windstorm. So you're probably gonna hear the wind blowing through my fireplace here. So um, if you hear that, just ignore it. See if you can anyway, because uh, it does get a little bit nosy. Okay, awesome. Everybody can hear and see me, so that's awesome. Um, hi, Linda, hi, Jan. There's lots of very familiar names. So thank you for showing up today. It just, it pleases me so much when you can show up live. It really, really means a lot to me. Hi, Beth and Lynn and Linda. Awesome, okay. All right, so we are gonna get started right away because you know, I tend to go a little bit long. Again, I'm gonna try to keep this to one hour, but you know, I'm not so good at that sometimes, but I'm gonna try. But I do have a couple of announcements that I want to make first because they're really beneficial to you. Now, the first thing I want to announce, and you guys are the first to hear of it, is I have a new online presentation that is going to be happening on March 2nd and March 4th. Now, it's called Three Advanced Strategies to Achieve the Fit You Want and gain the confidence to fit any sewing project. Now, I always do this big hour long presentation when I am launching my Fitting Essentials course. So you'll always get some amazing training and then at the end of the work, uh, workshop or the presentation, I always like to tell you about the Fitting Essentials course so that you know if you think that it's gonna be right for you or not. What I would love for you to do is register for that event. So I have put the link into the description of this um, post. So if you want to uh, go and do that after this is all done, by all means, I would love to have you there on that live presentation as well. You get to choose your date and the time. Um, so, you know, sign up if you can. I'd really, really love for you to, to, to be there. Now on that presentation, I'm gonna be sort of going through how you can assess your personal fitting needs. I'm going to show you how you can relate those fitting needs to the sewing pattern. And I'm also going to be uh, talking about how you can develop a fitting plan based on those needs. So those are the three uh, strategies that I want to teach you in that presentation. So again, it's free, you just need to register for it. And then of course after, uh, you'll have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about the Fitting Essentials course if you want to do that. Okay, of course also on that presentation, I always have another Q&A at the end as well. So please, I'd love to have you guys there. There is another um, announcement that I have. And again, I wanna talk about the Australian Sewing Guild, their autumn sewing celebration. I told you last week that uh, we are going to, I've, I have two videos coming out during that presentation. Tickets are on sale now. So they're only, I think $25, You, of course they're Australian dollars. Uh, I think they might be more for non-members, but uh, by all means, I think I've left the link in the description of the video as well. Uh, Pamela says, hi from Australia. Hi, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Okay, um, I do have a, a very, very important concept that I wanna share with you today. And I just wanna go back, a, just a step back, because if you don't know me at all, my fitting philosophy is really about balancing the garment on your body. And to do that, I use what we call balance lines. Now, this is similar to what Sarah Veblen does, you know, and if you have her, her book, I highly recommend it if you don't. Um, but I do really, really believe that these balance lines, that if you put them on your muslin, on the pattern, and then the muslin, you will actually be able to understand how to balance that garment on your body when, to fit it. So I want to sort of just talk to you about that. And I have an example from our 
Facebook group. So there's an in-house pattern studio Facebook group. So if you don't know about that, you can definitely pop into Facebook and, and do a search for that group. Uh, it's a private group, but I have um, a lot of previous students in there and people who are interested in fitting. And Tracy was kind enough to allow me to use her photos today. Now the concept that I want to talk about with her photos is something that I call garment balance, okay? Garment balance is again about balancing those balance lines on your body. So you're going to take the pattern with its balance lines on it and you're going to put it on your body and you're going to find the balance and change the pattern so it matches the balance of your body. So I said balance a lot so I'm going to show you a picture of what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to need your help again to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing here. So the first one is, okay, this is my online presentation uh, where you can go to actually register for that. But I have um, a image that I wanna show you that is from Tracy. This is the autumn sewing celebration, which I was supposed to show you as well. But of course, you know me, I get excited and uh, wanna move too quickly. Um, I'm gonna show you Tracy's photos here in just a second if I can find them. Okay. So can everyone um, see my screen here? I know there's a bit of a delay, but I want to make sure that you can actually see what's happening here. Okay. So I've got some yeses. Awesome. Okay. So what I wanted to talk to you about here is garment balance. And what Tracy has here is the sample of um, the Lila sewing pattern. So this is one of my sewing patterns. So the sewing pattern already has the balance lines marked on the sewing pattern. So what she's done here is apply them to her muslin fabric. And this is going to allow her to sort of understand how the balance of the pattern is working on the balance of her body. Now the concept I wanna talk about here that everyone really uh, sort of gets confused about is, is kind of what to do when the garment is swinging away from the body at the front and hitting against the body at the back. So you can see that physically because you can see that the fabric here across her, her bum here is sitting against her body and this front area here is swinging away from her body you also see wrinkles that go along with that. So you can actually see there's this wrinkle here that's showing um, some strain. Her bust is pulling the garment up. And you can see here, there are some wrinkles or bagging in the back here. This is very indicative of what I call a balance issue. Now, sometimes this is caused by a need for a larger dart volume. In some cases, that's true. But in some cases, it's really about needing more length on the front of the garment or less length on the back of the garment. So tell me if that makes sense to you. And I'm going to wait for some of your responses here because what it sort of tells you, these balance lines immediately tell you where the balance problem is. So what you need to decide is which side is hitting the correct position on your body. Okay, I'm getting some yeses, that's awesome. So some of you I know have been through my Fitting Essentials course. So you probably are already familiar with these ideas. But what you wanna decide first is which of the balance line, is it the front or the back that is actually following your um, position on your body? So for Tracy, my question would be, is the back waistline position correct for you? And if that's the case, you need to add more length to the front of your garment. Okay, yes, yeah. so Donna's saying, yes, it needs more length over the bust, okay? So then your next question is, is where do I need the extra length in the front? 
So this is where you're going to ask yourself, is my bust line position in the correct position for me? Now, if it is in the correct position, you're gonna to want to make your length adjustment below the bust line, right? Because if the bust line is in, in the right place, you don't need to add length above. But if it is not, if this bust line is high, which it looks like it is for you here, Tracy, you probably need to add more length to above the bust line, right? In order to allow these lines to drop and become level with the back. Now, when those lines drop, there is gonna be a reaction to that. So when you add length to the front of the garment, what's gonna happen is your side seam and your back will swing away from the body and your front will swing toward your body. So you can almost think of it like a bell where you know it's hanging from your shoulder and you want it to hang kind of evenly around your hip level, hip and waist. Okay, so I wanted to show these pictures because these were this was so evident that this is a balance issue because to me, it does not appear like she needs more dart volume. It looks like she has enough dart volume. So to me, this is more likely that she needs more length somewhere. Now there's another comp uh, concept that I want to share with you that is also something that I think um, people are having hard time visualizing. And I think what I'll do is I'll go to the mannequin for this. Let me just show you on the image first. So one of the things that, um, I'm just reading your comment here. Beth says, looks like the balance line at the apex is slightly higher than the underarm, so needs more length from shoulder to bust. So yes, Beth, I absolutely agree with that. So that's something that I want Tracy to experiment with. Um, Marnie says that uh, that totally makes sense and she has struggled with that. So that's the other thing I wanted to talk to you about too is one of the things that most people are always talking about is the wrinkles, okay? So I know that as sewers, we've been trained and taught that, that you're supposed to look at the wrinkles. The wrinkles show where the problem is and that is true. But if you use the balance lines, they are actually proof of where the, the problem actually lies. And if you create this grid on your garment and then follow that grid to balance it on your, on your body, you will find that the wrinkles will disappear. So instead of concentrating solely on the wrinkles that you see, what I want you to start practicing is looking at the balance lines and satisfying those so that they are parallel and perpendicular to the floor. Now doing that is going to solve so many uh, of the fit issues that if you think about it in that way. I hope that this is sort of making sense to you, okay? Um, I did want to talk about another concept though, and that is this idea that we think about sewing pattern as being two dimensional. And so I want you to think about the fact that this two-dimensional paper actually has to form itself around our three-dimensional bodies. So where you might think of length on the sewing pattern might actually be depth on your body. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about this area of the shoulder here. So you can see here at the top, Tracy, um, has um, kind of depth of her body. So her shoulder actually has a depth here. And that length of the back has to come over and through that depth of the body. And the same with the front. And it, this is actually irregardless of where the shoulder seam is located because the shoulder seam is just a seam line that separates the front from the back. It's really about how much fabric you need to go over this area of the shoulder. So on the sewing pattern, it is length, right? Because you see it as a flat piece, but on your body, it's actually depth. So this is one of the things where you can actually get some extra balance in your garment if you add to this area of your, of your pattern. Now I'm gonna to go to a flat pattern to kind of show you this concept a little bit more clearly, but I'm hoping that you guys can jump in and 
like this concept is really difficult for me to explain clearly. So ask me your questions now about this, because I'd really like for you to start thinking about it in this sort of more complex way. So it's really not just about the wrinkles and where they're pointing to, it's about the balance of the garment and how it hangs on your body. Um, Olita says, uh, it looks like the sleeve is out of balance and narrower in the back. Is this related to the front needing length? Yes, the sleeve has to sit on an armhole that fits perfectly. So you can actually see here that the balance line of the center sleeve is pitching forward. So it's very likely, and Tracy, you, I would love for you to test this. It's very likely that you might actually meet, need more length at this back shoulder seam area so that your notch on your sleeve will come forward, which will automatically swing your sleeve a little bit further back. Now this is sort of this three dimensional um, training that you get in your brain when you start really thinking deeply about fitting. Um, but this is a concept that I want you to start, sort of at least start experimenting with. We're gonna go to the flat pattern in just a minute so I can kind of show you what this might look like. Yes, and the across back. So Bev says, is the across back curving up? It is, but you can look at it another way. Is it the shoulders that are making that back curve down? So that's where you have to also think about where the position of the balance lines are based on your body. So again, if the center back position of the waistline is correct on this body, it is likely that maybe there is either more shaping needed in this upper back area or the shoulder slope isn't working in order to bring those lines up because it looks here at the back that the balance lines is uh, is level, right? So that means that everything above that needs to be tested to see if you can make those more balanced. Um, Barbara says, do you mean adding length to the front and back at the sleeve? Would you need to add it to the neckline or come in an angle? Well, that really depends on how you assess the fit um, in terms of what you particularly need. Um, it really will depend. You can just move the sh this shoulder point forward or you can move the whole seam forward. If you choose, it really depends on how you assess it. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back to the pattern. We'll probably come back to this image again, um, but I do want to show you the flat pattern. So I'm always navigating here on this um, uh, screen that I have here. So forgive me if um, it's a little bit jumpy here. So I'm gonna go to uh, my webcam here for a second. And here is a picture. That's for one of the questions. So, so here's kind of my example of exact sort of I, an idea about how you can change the balance of the garment so that the front actually becomes longer. Now you're not necessarily going to um, do all of these adjustments. You just may need to do one or some. It really is dependent on um, like how you assess it always start your adjustments at the top of the pattern so that you know that that cascading effect that happens. Okay, so for, for my example here is this is what I'm talking about in terms of that depth of the shoulder because you know that this part of the shoulder here wraps around to the top of your shoulder and so does the front. So there is a possibility that you may need more length there. And you'll notice here, I haven't added anything to the center back length in this case, but I have created more um, center back uh, neckline depth by moving this, this whole section up. Now, whether you move that whole section up or just part of, of the uh, shoulder up, it really is dependent on how you see how you see the fitting. My gut feeling for Tracy here is just to move that whole thing up. You may need to add it on both the front and back. You may only need it on the back or you may only need it on the front. You want to just experiment with those options. That's, that's what I'm saying. 
Now the other way that you can actually drop this front area and make that whole garment swing toward the back is to add length from the shoulder to the across front or the shoulder to bust line. You can add that through that front armhole area like this. Again, that will create that swing toward the back that the garment will be on your body. Another place that you can do it is actually through the bust dart. So if you have a side bust dart, or if even if you have a different bust dart, you can switch it to the side. You can put the extra length through this center front area and then put the increase the dart volume. But as I said, you have to experiment to see if you actually need more dart volume or not. Sometimes a really large dart volume isn't necessary. The balance is gonna come from adding um, length somewhere else or removing it from the back, as I said. And in Tracy's example, like I said, I feel like she needs more length on the front. So these are the, the reasons I'm sort of suggesting these three as possibilities. Um, let me see, I'm just looking at your comments. Do you move the shoulders up directly parallel from the shoulder seam or do you move them up along the grain line? Excellent, excellent question, Ashley. Always move it parallel to the grain line. Use the grain line to shift this because if you don't, what's gonna happen is these neck points are going to become misaligned they will not be following the correct direction of the pattern. If you need to make, if you need to change the neck width, you will do that in a different type of alteration. Uh, Barb is asking, can you add to above dart and below armhole so that you don't mess with the armhole? I know there's a lot of fear um, that comes with messing with the armhole. And I totally don't blame you because everyone is afraid to mess up the sleeve. But one of the things that you just need to remember about sleeves is they come after your perfect armhole. Always, always assess that armhole area first. Make sure everything is balanced on your body based on, on uh, the balance lines and then, then actually look at your sleeve. The sleeve can be altered uh, by just changing the cap height overall and then walking your sleeve to get the correct notch positions. One of the things I don't want you to be overly afraid of is messing with the sleeve because chances are if your bodice isn't correct, your sleeve, once you correct the bodice, you can actually walk the sleeve in your pattern and figure out how to alter it pretty quickly. So don't let that, that fear of altering the sleeve stop you from working with the armhole if it's required. Um, okay. So Claudia is asking, are you saying one change at a time or all at once? It depends on how you assess it. It is much easier to to test the effects of one change at a time. But of course, there are some things that you can combine. So for instance, what I'd like you to do if you're working with a muslin sample already, use that muslin sample for as long as you can because I don't want you making like a million samples of the same thing with one tiny change on each. What I want you to do is make sure that you use that one sample as effectively and efficiently as you possibly can. If you need to add strips of fabric to it, if you need to um, use like wider seam allowances to begin with in order to be able to play with it, by all means do that because you will be much happier rather than constantly sewing the same muslin over and over again. I really am trying, even though this particular process that I talk to you about all the time is quite labor intensive, I want you to learn from each of the methods as you go, you learn from each of your samples because what will happen is over time, you'll recognize the things you need to do more quickly and you'll be making fewer and fewer samples the more experience you have using this method. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, Anne is saying, would the across front balance line indicate whether you should lengthen in the armhole area or above the bus? Um, not necessarily. It's really the bus line because that across front usually is measured about three inches down, but that position uh, for that across 
front line can be kind of different on every garment. Use the bust line as your guide. So if the bust line is rising, you know that you need an adjustment somewhere between the shoulder and the bust line adding length either to the front or like I said, you may need to add to the back in order for that back to not be boring from the front. So always just keep looking at those balance lines, figure out which one is correct and then work around the body from that point. Um, does a shoulder too square for the garment shoulder slope also cause balance lines to slope up or does it cause the floating neckline? Both, it, it will both actually. Um, actually, if, the, if your shoulder slope is too steep for you, then what tends to happen is the neckline will float around, but your balance line will actually look like it's doing this, right? So it really, really you have to experiment. And like I said, always always start from the very top of the garment and move down for for tops dresses and jackets that's always how you should work okay so i'm hoping that that kind of gave you some idea of um kind of this idea of garment balance what i want you to do is always be looking at the balance lines first and then look at the wrinkles because the idea is if you have those balance lines balanced on your body, the wrinkles will disappear. Like they will automatically disappear once those lines are balanced. So I want you to sort of understand that point and always work to that. Balance lines are more important than the wrinkles because the wrinkles are a symptom of the balance lines being out of balance for your body, okay? So give me a yes if you understand that and that you will actually try to think of it this way. Okay, let me hear. Okay, so I do have, um, let me see. I'm just going through, I always make notes here. So I wanted to make sure that I covered everything there. Okay, so we've got lots of yeses. Thank you guys. Um, Yes, okay, good. I'm glad there's some clarity there. I know it's still gonna feel a little bit muddy, but I want you to just keep like forcing your eye back to those balance lines because it's so automatic. We've been taught forever and ever and ever that you're supposed to look at the wrinkles. And what I'm trying to get people to look for for that those all those major issues is those balance lines. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm going to start the uh, Q&A and we're going to start with Janice from um, the last live we had because we really only were able to uh, cover pants last time. Um, and I'm glad we kind of got to group it together like that because uh, that way it's kind of in its own little package. Um, there were still some questions about pants that came in after that, but, and if I have time, I will cover them, but we've got lots of questions that I think are really going to be valuable to everyone here today. Okay. So Janice asked a question and her question was, how much ease do you recommend for fitted pants, waist, high hip, hip, crotch length and depth? And she also wants to know about jackets. So. For fitted pants, generally you want a half to one inch of ease in the waist. For fitted pants in the hip girth, you will need at least an inch and a half. Two inches is standard. And of course, depending on the style, it can go above that. Two inches is standard, an inch and a half if they are like jeans or really snug fitting. If they have stretch, of course, it could be a negative um, amount of ease as well. So it depends exactly what kind of garment you're looking at. Now the crotch depth, again, it really depends on how, how snug the pants are. So denim could be zero. It could be a quarter inch, um, kind of, uh, looser trouser fitting pants might be up to an inch. Uh, and if you did the Bria lounge pants with, with me, you, you can actually drop it to two inches and actually four inches if you really want a loose, loose fitting pant. So it really, really depends on the styling for that. 
Um, you also wanted to know about uh, jackets, so shoulders, bust, waist, hip. So shoulders are usually between a quarter and a half inch if it's really fitted. If you want more ease in the jacket, you're gonna have an inch, so half inch on each side. Bust, waist, and hip is generally uh, two inches. But uh, what I'm finding is the larger size patterns require three to four inches. So it really depends on your comfort level and um, how much uh, uh, flesh that you're carrying because quite honestly, like when you have a lot of, of, of body flesh, when you sit and you move around, what tends to happen is you need more ease to make room and space for, for, for your body parts, right? So always, always be thinking about that because you also want to be comfortable. It's really easy to make things really snug and look good. I call these cocktail clothes. You can't actually move in them. All you can do is like take a little sip uh, of, of wine or cocktail, right? Because you can't actually move, sit, or walk around. It looks beautiful. Everything looks great, but you can't move. So expect to have some ease in there. Okay. Um, I just want to just finish up, make sure um, arm girth always minimum two inches and I'm finding two for larger sizes. Often you might need three inches to feel comfortable uh, moving around in that garment. So, okay. Okay, so Terry is asking, does the ease take the woven bodice block to a jacket? Yes, yeah, so adding ease, you, you can definitely create a, a jacket out of it. Because the thing is that ease allows you to put garments underneath, right? So the bodice block, if you only have two inches of ease in that bodice block, you'll probably need maybe three inches in the jacket in terms of the circumference. So always think about how you're gonna be wearing that garment. Coats, you might need four to five inches. So you're always thinking about the layers of garments that you're wearing for each of these types of garments. Um, okay, so that's kind of Janice's question. And if Janice is here today, I'd love for her to uh, tell me if that answers her question. Charlotte has a question too. What do I do about fit adjustments when the ease of the garment fit varies? Do I still do an FBA or a, on a semi-fitted or loose blouse? Yes. So ease is not associated with contour in terms of your bust cup size. Bust cup size is about bust projection. It's about the shape of your body and the amount of space it needs to occupy. So if you are not the cup size of the sewing pattern, you need to make a cup size adjustment regardless of how it fits, right? Regardless of the styling. Otherwise, you're gonna get wrinkles and drag lines where you may not want them. Now, where this, where you can stray from that is if you're not so fussy about how it looks on your body. So if you have a really loose fitting garment, like a, like a robe or something like that, it's probably okay not to worry about doing a bust adjustment because the flowiness and the uh, looseness of the garment kind of has wrinkles anyway. So you can definitely kind of skip that step if you really, really want. But if you want it to fit beautifully and not gape and do funny things then I really always recommend that you make a bust cup size adjustment if you are not the cup size of the sewing pattern okay so Charlotte hope that answers your question uh, Ashley asked tips for creating balance lines on commercial patterns for mock-ups so if you don't know already the last two video tutorials I've done on my website are how to do exactly that. So I want you to go to inhousepatternstudio.com and definitely check out the two most recent um, videos because I've shown you exactly how to do that on a commercial pattern which does not have them marked yet, okay? Uh, Carol is asking, because of my posture and prominent bust, garments often hang short at the front and long at the back. Reducing the back length between the armholes by an inch fixes the problem. 
how do you adjust the sleeve pattern to fit the shorter back armhole? So Carol is actually describing what we just talked about, which is a balance issue in the garment. And what she's saying is that reducing the back armhole is solving the problem because it's changing the balance of the garment on her body. So her question is, how do I adjust the sleeve? So I do have an example, which I am going to show you. Okay. So let me just switch cameras here. And what I want to show you here is this example here. So this sort of describes what Carol was doing. So what she's done is she's reduced the back length through the armhole by overlapping it. I think she said an inch from what I understand. Now, what she wants to do, understand is how do I change the sleeve? But first, I want her to consider something. Since she has reduced the back armhole by a total of an inch, this is a lot. You always want to have your front armhole shorter than your back. And that's simply because our back is longer, has more roundness than the front of our body. So the front armhole is always standard is about a half inch shorter than the um, length of the back armhole. If she's reduced this by an inch, what's going to happen if she alters her sleeve like you normally would. So if you did this, one of the suggestions I would have, you can easily do this. You can cut your cap down and then change and overlap your sleeve like this by the same amount that you close the back. Okay, that is a possibility. But I want you to make note of what happens to your sleeve. The grain line has to go straight up. Your notch moves toward the back. And when your notch moves toward the back, what you'll find is your sleeve will start hanging toward the back. And it's gonna cause sleeve fitting issues here at the front. So this is why I always say, make sure that you have a proper armhole before you worry about the sleeve. Now, what I would suggest possibly that you can do instead of even messing with the sleeve is if you reduce the back length by one inch, what I'd like you to try do, doing is lowering the base of the armhole by a half inch each. Now, this is still going to be a slight imbalance, but your armhole size will be taken back to its original in this way and likely you'll just need to move your notches and not change anything about your sleeve. So that's something that you can try and see if that works for you. Because like I said, if you were to reduce the back of the sleeve that by that same amount, let's say I close this by an inch, you're gonna see that when I put this grain line back up, it's getting, whoops, dangerously close to where this notch is. This is still okay. This notch has to be in the on the front side of the center grain line of the sleeve. If you end up having this notch in the back here somewhere, what's going to happen is that sleeve is going to hang toward the back of the body. And trust me, this does not work for anyone. <laughs> so um, definitely take a look at that. Take a look at possibly lowering the armhole by half the amount of however much you've changed here. Okay. So that's my suggestion there. And you can let us know uh, if it works for you. Okay, that was Carol. Hannah Laura had a similar um, issue. So I'm gonna just bring in another little example here. Uh, Jerry is saying now uh, flared jacket balance lines was a game changer for her. Okay. So that was the last video that I did. That was Tuesday's video that I sent out uh, that Jerry's referring to. Okay, so Hannah Laura had a very similar issue. And this is another example of 
when you reduce the back length of the garment. So again, this is another balance, a garment balance issue. So her story was this, is she made a rounded back adjustment, which added to the center back length. She wants to bring the center back length back to her body measurement. So now she knows she has to reduce above the waistline, below the bust line by that same amount. I think it was about half inch is what she mentioned. So what she, her pattern alteration is gonna to be to do that is just to to slash through and overlap the back. Now the result of that is going to be, she'll end up with a shortened side seam on her back. So she has to somehow kind of make sure that the front is going to fit in the correct way, right? So this seam line and this one have to match. So one of the suggestions I have for her, because she does not want to change the position of her front waistline, is to actually add to her dart volume in order to rectify the discrepancy between her side seam lines. So if she overlaps the back by a half inch in order to get her waistline to sit in the correct position, what I'd suggest she do to reduce the front by that much without reducing, without changing the waistline position is to increase her dart volume by a quarter inch on each side. So you can see here, I've drawn a little wider dart and for her example, it would be a quarter inch wider on each side. So she'll have a total one half inch of volume that she's adding to the dart so that she could remove the length from the side seam. Now, this is one that you probably won't see in any fitting book. You might somewhere, I don't know, but um, this is something that I often recommend, especially if you're finding uh, that you need to rectify these two side seam line lengths. Okay, so let me hear from you. Nobody's commenting. Are you guys lost? Let me know, because I don't want to leave you behind. Okay, so the next question, let's see. <laughs> Carmen says that this is her favorite fix. Yeah, this is one of the uh, alterations that uh, we talked about in the Fitting Essentials course the year that Carmen joined. Okay, so Connie says, got it here. Okay, all right, so we're getting some goods. There's nobody who said they haven't understood yet. So um, that's right. Oh, Beth is asking how to remove the dart for a flat chested woman. I actually have a video tutorial on that. Um, and I don't know what it's called, but if you look on my website, it's called, if you click on fitting the bust, uh, you will find all the bus fitting videos and I think it's the last one, the very top one on the list. So definitely take a look at that. Um, okay, so lots of people are saying understood. Uh, excellent, okay. Yes, so Alita says, won't that make the dart volume larger? It will. So that's another thing that you have to take into account to see if that's okay. So in other words, I would not make a two inch change here and then add an inch, an inch here. Likely there are other issues. So usually when you do this type of fix, it's usually a small amount. So the amount that Hannah Laura was mentioning was it would be a half inch. So a half inch added to the dart sometimes could actually be quite good. So, so you do have to think about that. Yeah, and Linda's saying the same thing. So what if it makes it too big? It's likely that that is not the fix that you have to do. Likely maybe you took too much here, or here's another thing you can do. You can actually add to the height of the back armhole and the height of the, and let me say that again. If this dart volume doesn't work, in other words, you don't need extra dart volume, what you can do is add to the back armhole and remove from the front armhole. You will have to rec reconcile your balance lines, uh, but that is definitely something that you can do to sort of balance out the length of the, uh, of the side seams, okay? So you can always do that. Uh, couldn't you just add length to the back below the, the waistline? So in that case, you could if that's what you needed to do. But if the waistline is already in, if the waistline needs to be raised by that half inch, 
that, that Hanalore is talking about, then adding it or removing it from the bottom won't make any difference because you're trying to move the waistline, right? And so if you need to make a change above the waistline, the actual alteration has to come above the waistline, not below it. So you always have to, again, come back to that idea of how do I put those balance lines in the correct position for me and what do I need to do to make that happen? That's really what the whole process is about. Okay, so we're gonna move on. Um, Carmela is asking, I'm gonna come back to you here. Carmela is asking, how do I adjust the back for a scoliosis? The right shoulder blade is prominent, causing a gaping armhole. Drag lines to the side waist and neck gape. So when you have scoliosis, you have no choice but to fit to your asymmetries. So it's very likely that what you're going to have to do is create a full out pattern, a full front and a full back. And you're gonna to have to make changes to each side. Automatically, it's got to, it just has to be done. This makes things really quite complicated for you. So what I would suggest you do is work on some basic styles, styles that you love and you really like to wear and work on that and on fitting those, on perfecting the fit of those. Now there is a fine line between fitting like perfectly to your asymmetries because what happens is, is you tend to draw attention to that asymmetry. So sometimes what you might wanna do is, for instance, if your one shoulder is higher or quite a bit lower than the other, you might wanna put things like shoulder pads in place or some sort of um, kind of balancing act because as humans, we, we just automatically want to see um, things that are level and balanced. And when they aren't, you always tend to take a second look. So you want to sort of um, mitigate that a little bit. It's okay to fit to your asymmetries, but try to balance them off a little bit because you don't want to overemphasize, overemphasize those things. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Nancy asks, is it easier to take a pattern, take in a pattern or let out a pattern at the waist and hips for pants? I always say that no matter what kind of garment it is, it's always easier to fit if the garment is slightly bigger than you need. And I say that because when it's too tight, you will end up getting more wrinkling and you'll be more confused over how to assess things, right? So if it's too tight, even though if you had eased it off, the balance lines might be totally level. If it's too tight, they might be rising because they're trying to find a smaller area on the body to go. So always, always it's easier, no matter what kind of garment it is to fit if it's slightly larger. Now, if it's super oversized, that's definitely not any better situation. So try to get close to your measurements, but slightly larger if you're going through that fitting process. Anne says a shoulder pad is automatic for me on one shoulder. Yeah, so it's just somehow it kind of just, it creates balance in your body and it doesn't draw attention to uh, your asymmetry if you sort of make up for it in this way. Not every garment you're gonna wanna do that with. So, I mean, I mean, don't even consider doing that for everything. Like a t-shirt uh, underneath a jacket doesn't need to have um, that sort of sort of fitting, but the jacket might, for instance. So that we're just talking about the asymmetry again. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, Anne asks, is it better to choose a pattern size by the high bust measurement or by the shoulder point to shoulder point across back measurement? Um, it depends. It, it really depends. I have used both. In some pattern companies, if they list the shoulder width, then that makes it easy for you to decide um, if that pattern is right for you. But you also have to take into consideration what the bust cup size of the pattern is and the other dimensions of the pattern. Because what you want to do is basically try to assess how many pattern alterations you're gonna to have to make to a pattern. If you choose the size based on your shoulder width, count how many adjustments are you gonna to have to make. If, you have to, if you're choosing by your high bust girth measurement, you can actually determine the uh, amount of adjustments that you're gonna to have to make just by looking at the size chart. This is one of the exercises that we do do in Fitting Essentials. It's one of the first steps that we take um, when we're going through those lessons. 
So really, really it depends and I would take it a step further. I would say that you, you need to actually look at all the body measurements and decide exactly which one, you, if you chose the sh by the shoulder width, what kind of pattern alterations you would need to make and if you chose by the high bust, what kind of pattern alterations. I always say choose the one that you have to make the least amount of alterations to. That's what I always, always say. It keeps you uh, actually moving forward rather than spinning your wheels with fitting, okay? Um, Debbie asks, very narrow shoulders, um, but the bust is uh, size, okay, so very narrow shoulders, she's UK, UK size 16, but the bust size is 22 to 24. I use upper bust, so but there are so many adjustments. Where do I start? When you are proportionally different from your shoulders, and, and I have this issue too, I have a large cup size, very narrow shoulder, kind of a, a shapely silhouette. So what I find is, is that if you're not close to the standard that that pattern company uses as their base size for creating their patterns, there is no choice but for you to do as many pattern adjustments that are necessary to get that garment to fit. Unless you start drafting your own patterns that are actually accommodating all of the shape and balance and the proportion of your body, there you're always going to have tons of, of changes to make. I know it's frustrating, but you know what? If you start with the process, if you actually go through the process step by step by step, over time, you will start to understand exactly what you need to do, and it'll become much easier and much quicker as you kind of go through the process. Certain pattern companies are probably gonna work better for you than others, so that's another search that you can actually try um, going by. Okay. Um, hopefully that helps a little. I know it's not very, um, <laughs> not very comforting to know that no matter what, you still have to do adjustments. But that's what I'm saying. Um, I always say this. It's um, oh, Terry is asking a question that I, I, I want to jump in here because I think it is very valid. She's asking, do the pattern companies have significantly different body models? They will they will definitely have different like the ones that i use are not the ones that um that another company will use like for instance cashmere she uses alpha form models but she's starting with different sizes her models probably look different than mine um so even though we might start with the same base size like for example i'm using a size 8 for one size category and a size 18 for another she might be starting with a different body shape and maybe a size 20 as her midsize. I'm not sure. I don't know for sure. So if you guys know, by all means, you can correct me on that. And if she starts with a size eight, her size eight body might be completely different than mine. So companies will always have their own base size. Some of them don't even have standard body forms like this. They might be trying it on themselves. They might be ha have a completely different body shape that they're working with. Um, so it's something that you really do have to, uh, you know, it's kind of trial and error for you as a sewer uh, to figure out, you know, which pattern company is going to work best for you. Um, I have tons and tons of body measurements on my size chart. So it's pretty easy to tell from my sizing chart where, if you're going to fit in, in terms of length, girth, and all that. I have all kinds of measurements online, but that doesn't exist for everyone. Some pattern companies really believe that um, the sizing chart is, is oh, I forget what they call it, but basically they're protecting that information. And as far as I'm concerned, if I want people to be successful sewing my sewing patterns, I want to share as much information that's gonna help them get a good fit as I can. So if somebody wants to copy my measurement chart, well, go ahead. It's The pattern is never gonna be the same because I'm creating the pattern, not someone else. So that is definitely um, something to think about. Um, 
Oh yeah, Anita says, I love your sizing charts. They are so helpful. They really are. Like with the amount of information that you have available to you on, on the sizing chart, it really will help you figure out how to alter the pattern, even if they don't have um, the information on the pattern themselves. But as you know, uh, going forward, any of the new patterns I'm creating will always have these balance lines on it. And currently there's just one pattern that I have for sale, which is the Lila sewing pattern that you saw Tracy in the other, uh, just a few minutes ago. Okay, so we're gonna keep moving on here. Um, Carmen says, she's having trouble understanding how her body differences affect the fit and pattern changes that are needed. Um, so this is a perfect example for me to tell you, uh, Carmen, please, please sign up for the free presentation that I have on March 2nd and March 4th, because in that presentation, I'm going to be showing you how you can sort of determine how your body is different than the sizing chart, how your body is different from, uh, you know, the, the model on the cover. I'm going to be showing you how to assess these things. So I hope that you uh, will will sign up for that or register for that. Um, it's no cost. That particular presentation has no cost. So definitely join if you can. Carolyn asks, my shoulder seams are constantly slipping forward, causing a lot of excess fabric on the front uh, neck and chest. When she picks up the shoulder seams to move them where they're supposed to be, everything looks great. So my suggestion to you, Carolyn, is to check if your back neck drop is too low. Because if your garment is slipping forward constantly, there's something wrong with the balance of the garment on your body. So either the back neck drop is too low and it's not kind of holding the garment in the correct place, or there are other issues like it could be that your back is rounded and it's forcing the fabric forward if it's a loose garment um th there just could be a lot of different situations so as i said find a pattern that you can test that has the balance lines on them and i'll bet you you'll be able to figure it out by looking at the garment balance on your body um, Jerry is asking, what's your first existing pattern to be expanded in si sizes? The most popular one is actually the Chelsea pattern. I have not gotten to that <laughs> at all. Um, I just have right now, I have the Lila pattern. But if you actually take a look at the Lila pattern, you'll notice that the if you kind of combine the sleeve from view A and the body of view B, you'll get a very, very similar um, looking pattern. And actually, Tracy, the images I showed you earlier um, is an example of the A and B combined together um, again something that you can definitely definitely take a look at um, Kay <laughs> Kay says uh, sorry she's late she has a dog poo issue sorry about that Kate uh, Kay sorry um, all right let's move on um, we're gonna go to uh, Ashley and Jackie actually asked their this, what is a good way to measure the shoulder width of patterns that aren't a typical set in sleeve? So if it's a raglan or a dolman. So it's really difficult to measure a sewing pattern that does not have a standard set in sleeve for shoulder width. So it's very likely that this is one of the measurements that you can't actually check or change before you make your sample. So in other words, you'll skip that and you'll move on to the next one that you can actually assess and change, okay? So I want you to always think about that. Some things you just can't discern from based on the style of the garment. So sometimes you do have to leave it until you see your first sample. And as you know, uh, if you've been with me through the Fitting Essentials course, you'll know that I always try to assess as many things on the pattern before you see a sample, because if you can eliminate at least those first three kind of yucky samples, you'll feel like you're gonna get more success in the end. Um, Polly says, I've been told regarding sizing that it's better to have the hips be correct and then fit the waist. What's this 
does this seem correct? So if you're talking about pants and skirts, yes, that is correct, Polly. I would say I should have said skirt pattern, definitely. If the hips, if you can get the hip circumference correct, it's pretty easy to determine the shaping that you need uh, for the waist. So definitely I agree with that, that is correct. Okay, and Um, Anne has a question and I think I have a little example for you here. My question is this, I know I need to shorten the space between the shoulder and the patterns bust line, but I also need to lower the bust line. Um, how do I decide where to shorten between the shoulder and bust line on the pattern and then how do I handle lowering the bust line? So um, I'm going to show you an example. I'm just going to looking at your comments here. Uh, yeah, Lynn says Kayla is only sold with the fitting class. That is correct. So the Kayla sewing pattern is only inside the fitting essentials class. And then Laura is asking, when is it open? It will open on March 2nd is when you can purchase the class. Um, if you join that uh, presentation that I'm doing on March 2nd and 4th, you're going to hear all about the fitting essentials course at the very end. Um, so I want you to, to, to register for that. So you'll get some great training before that. And then I'm going to tell you about the course and then you can enroll after that. Um, Bev says, I'm about to fit a wrap front blouse. I think finding the front balancing lines could be challenging. It may be, especially if that you have no indication of bust. So that's another thing just before we get to, um, to Anne's question. Um, sometimes if there is absolutely zero markings, in other words, there's no way that you can possibly determine where the balance lines are, you really have no choice but to sew up a sample. Now this is why I think the balance lines and at least having indications of where the bust points are and where, where the waist, like maybe there's a waist notch or something on the pattern, those are gonna be helpful for you to be able to assess, assess fit or apply those, um, those balance lines to your pattern. But this is also why I feel really strongly about adding these to my sewing patterns going forward because I feel like they're just such an amazing help to, uh, to allow you to fit them, to understand how to fit them on your body. So it's something that, you know, I'm really hoping to expand. Um, it's difficult uh, just simply because of the amount of time there is in a day, you know, you can't really do everything at once. But, you know, as we move forward, I'm definitely going to be doing that. Okay, so let's just review um, Anne's question again because I know I got a little sidetracked. And of course, I think we are at three o'clock and at our hour, so we're gonna do a few more uh, questions here. Um, but I'm gonna go to the other camera here and answer Anne's question. And this one I haven't prepared yet, but basically what Anne is saying is she knows that she needs to, is it add? Let's see, Anne says, she needs to shorten the space between the shoulder and the bust line, but then she needs to add length to put the bust line into the correct position. So in other words, she's gonna shorten this. So I'm just gonna draw this in. Where you shorten it in this armhole doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. Um, somewhere above the notch usually is best. And all you're gonna do is slash through and then overlap your pattern piece. So that's basically how you shorten it. Okay, so let's say that we did this, it's overlapped and shortened. Now what she needs to do is because she shortened here, her bust line maybe became too high. So what she needs to do now is slash through and open above, just above the bust line. So it's another word, you're still hitting the side seam and then you're gonna add there. Okay, so if you add here, what are you going to do here, right? So you have to actually rectify that. So what you can do in that case is again, you can play with the base of the armhole. So if you added a half inch here to lower that bust line position, what you might wanna do is lower this by one quarter let me see if I have that right. No, it's going to be, yeah, 
and then you're going to add one quarter here at the armhole because you need to rectify the, those side seams shaping. The other thing is if this added length to the bust also drops the waistline too much, you may not need to worry about doing any of this. What you can do is add above the bust line, but again, reduce below the bust line. So in other words, you'll be over, slashing through and overlapping. So the overall length is, is changed correctly your side seam length becomes the same again and you rectify the position of those balance lines. Okay, so that's kind of the suggestion for you there. So if you overlap here, you have to find some way to rectify the other, other position of the balance line. So you're gonna add it um, above the bust line because you wanna drop that bust line. Um, add it back. So in other words, if you close this one by a half inch, you're going to open this by a half inch to get that length to be the same. And then again, one of the options is to rectify, balance out the side seams through the armhole, or you can then change the length of the side seam back to the correct one again by overlapping below the bust. So again, it depends on how you have assessed your sample and the position of those balance lines. So hopefully that makes sense for you, Anne. Um, okay, so let's do another question here. So Connie says, what is the best way to make adjustments to a one piece yoke? That is a front and back with no shoulder seam. So if she wants to do a forward shoulder, narrow shoulder, etc., do I need to cut it at the shoulder to adjust? You do. So let me see if I have an example here for you. I think I do. Sorry, little information here to go back to. Okay, so this is the uh, just a scaled version of the Kayla sewing pattern that we use in that Fitting Essentials course. This particular pattern has the shoulder line of the of the yoke right along the shoulder seam line, but what? Um, Shelby, oh no, it's what Grace is talking about, I think, sorry, Connie is talking about, is if she has a pattern that has the seam line beyond the shoulder line of your body, how do you make the adjustments to, to, the, to the yoke in order for a forward shoulder or anything? You need to figure out where that shoulder line is. So I know on my sewing patterns, I will put notches where the shoulder line is. So I always do that, but not every pattern maker is going to do that. So you either need to mark it on your body or you need to um, um, just find a position where it makes sense um, from the sample. Like I said, when these very important guidelines aren't there for you as sewers, it makes it so much harder for you to fit the garment. So you will end up making more samples because of that. Um, let me see. Just taking a look at your comments because I want to make sure that I haven't lost you entirely. So, um, so Jerry said, okay, so Jerry says, I thought all of the lengthen and shorten was a lot of extra work, but it was simply adjusting the pattern to my body's unique shape. So I think there's a little discussion going on about their experience in the fitting essentials course. It is very, very comprehensive. And it, you do, I do have you going through a lot of adjustments. And that is because I need you to understand how to alter the pattern in order to make it align to your body proportions. So that's another great thing. Like, I'm sorry to be selling the, um, <laughs> the uh, fitting essentials and this presentation that I have coming up because it's so important to me uh, that you understand this idea of how to alter the pattern to match your body proportions, your shape and your symmetry, because that is what 
fitting is entirely about. I can't even stress it enough. Um, once you understand how to alter the pattern so that it aligns to your body, you will just be in heaven when it comes to sewing. You'll spend less time doing alterations. You'll be able to do them really, really quickly. And then you'll be able to just quickly get to the sewing because you'll be so confident that you've got your um, fitting done well that uh, you know, you're not even thinking about it anymore. It's just a part of your process, right? Okay, so let's go back to this. Sorry, it was a bit of a tangent because I'm very, very passionate about how, helping you to understand this concept. It's not easy. I'm never gonna tell you that fitting is easy. It just isn't. <laughs> you do need to take time and, and, and do it, uh, do, take time to do it and think about it and learn about it. Okay, so I wanna go back to the yoke. So just give me a second. Okay, so if you're gonna alter the yoke, you need to be able to find some position of where that actual shoulder line is. And then when you have that yoke, what you need to do is make the adjustments there. So you can see here that I have changed the shoulder slope of the pattern at the shoulder line simply by splitting the, the yoke along that line and opening it up. I haven't changed this position, but I've added here. Okay, so you, you do definitely have to make those changes on the yoke piece at the shoulder line. Making them here won't make really any difference. It'll actually um, kind of confuse you. You'll end up adding length where you probably don't need it. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so Joy, did that, did that finish that for you? I just wanna make sure that uh, that was clear because I know I went off on a tangent, so. Uh, so that was Connie's questions, but I know Joy was interested in this. So give me a yay or nay in the comments. Okay, so Barb says clear. All right, perfect. Um, perfect, okay, Connie's got it, so good, I'm glad. Um, so yes, definitely do that. Uh, will it change the armhole? Yes, it adds length to the armhole. So what are you going to do here? This is either going to um, increase your cap height or your cap width, okay? But but like I said, concentrate on making sure that armhole is correct. And then what I want you to do is always just walk the existing sleeve inside the armhole as it is and, and find out what you're missing. So when you open up here, your armhole girth is going to get larger, right? By however much you open this up. So that either means it's going to remove the amount of ease that is in your sleeve, right? Because your sleeve usually has at least an inch of ease. So if that happens, you need to sort of decide what you're going to do to the sleeve. And I have to find my sleeve again so I can show you. Here's another sleeve. So if you are adding circumference to your armhole, you either have to add cap height. So in other words, you can slash along that and open it up to make that cap height taller because it's likely that when you did this, your armhole got higher too. So cap height totally makes sense. Okay. So you can, you can add there or sometimes if you need more bicep girth, you can always add here. So you can actually change your sleeve on a grid once you have your armhole figured out. If your armhole isn't figured out, don't even bother working with your sleeve yet. Just keep the sleeve as it is, and then once you have your armhole figured out, walk the sleeve inside of their armhole and decide what you need to do. Now also, um, of course, at the Australian Sewing Guild, I have one of the videos is all about the armhole and sleeve connections. Now I do already have a video on my website that is called the armhole sleeve con uh, connection, and it gives you the relationships between the armhole and the sleeve and how to figure out if that sleeve is gonna work in that armhole. Now the one that I've done for the Australian Sewing Guild for their um, industry day, 
is a little bit more expanded. I've got more information and it also includes a downloadable sheet for you as well. So I've got a little bit more information there, but I do have it for absolutely free um, in on my website as well. Um, so definitely look there and I think it's just under the category fitting sleeves and you're going to look for the video called uh, the armhole and sleeve uh, connection. Okay. Um, yeah, Carmen is saying another important thing that she learned is to accept is that perfection is not necessary. We move around in our garments and we don't stand with perfect posture in front of mirrors in real life. Carmen, thank you for that because that is so, so important. When we are standing in front of a mirror or looking at our fitting photos, we often, often are so critical of every single little wrinkle. And I think what I want you to understand is that when you're moving, people don't see these things. This is your natural, um, uh, the ease that you need to actually move around. So don't be overly critical of each little wrinkle that comes up. I know it's hard when you're trying to kind of reach perfection, but perfection I think only actually uh, is uh, available to you if you're willing to not have the ability to move. In other words, you wanna make cocktail clothes um, that you only need to sip a little martini in, okay? Okay. Wanda says, if you are changing your for forward shoulder, wouldn't you adjust the back accordingly, not affecting the armhole? If you're changing the forward, wouldn't you adjust the back? I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Wanda. I'm sorry. You'll have to sort of clarify. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what you mean, uh, Wanda. You'll have to re-ask your question, I think. Okay, so we're gonna go for just a little bit no more here. Um, Valerie is asking, how do you define the shoulder point exactly and the required ease in coats on a muscular build? For winter coats, um, sleeves that creep up when arms stretch forward, uh, she doesn't like. So Valerie, I mean, like I said before, ease is something that is so incredibly uh, personal and it's something that you're going to have to discover for yourself. And what I want you to do is, um, is kind of, you can either measure coats that you already have and if you feel like they're too snug in that area, make note of what that measurement is and then on your next make, add a little bit more. This is really about experimenting because ease is so, so very, very personal. And no matter how many standards I give you, it might not even be what you particularly need for your level of movement. Um, okay, so that's kind of the question, the answer I have for that. Um, and Karen's. Okay, so Vanessa has a very valid question and we're gonna wrap up in just a few minutes here because I don't wanna keep all of you up too late here. What is the best way to fit the back area when sewing for yourself? Obviously, this is a difficult area to reach on your own body. It is difficult. Fitting the back is really difficult, but what I highly recommend that you do is get in the habit of um, taking fitting photos. You're gonna take front, side, and back view, just like Tracy did in our previous, uh, in, when, I, when I showed you at the beginning, and it's going to help you understand what to do as long as you have those balance lines on there. So definitely I would suggest that. Um, all right, so there was a question that Barbara had and it was about too much fabric on the back of the sleeve or the arm seam. So often this happens when you have a, a forward shoulder and I'm just gonna show you uh, the sleeve again here. Often when you have a more prominent uh, forward shoulder. So in other words, the ball joint of your shoulder is actually kind of sitting here on the sleeve. What you'll often get is sort of drag lines that will point to this kind of the ball of your shoulder here. So what this usually means is that you need to shift your sleeve head 
forward so that the curve of your sleeve it actually gives you fabric on this side of the front side of the sleeve. Now, when you have this, what you'll likely find is that there'll be extra fabric or bulging out here. And that's because you don't need the fabric here. You actually need it here. So what I always suggest if, you're do, if you have that really forward ball joint is I want you to slash through that top part of the sleeve, again, perpendicular to the grain line. I always like to work that way. And then all you need to do is shift that sleeve head forward. And then what happens is you can shave off that extra fabric at the back that's kind of bulking there and you can add fabric where you need it to be. So if this was your original shoulder ball position, your sleeve head now is matching where you need the fabric and it's being removed from where you don't need the fabric. So hopefully that makes sense. This is probably a more common alteration than most people realize. Once again, you will definitely have to rewalk your sleeve to make sure that uh, it fits into your armhole again. Um, and I'm hoping that everyone knows what I mean when I say that you need to rewalk your sleeve. You need to walk your seam line as if you're sewing it into the armhole so that you can uh, make sure that uh, it's going to fit properly. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so can you see how that changes the entire shape of the sleeve head? Pitches it forward like your shoulder would be. Okay, Joy says yes, she understands. And Barb says it makes sense, so that's good. Okay, so we're at 20 after three my time. So again, I have gone over um, our one hour appointment. And that's simply because I really wanna try to get to as many um, questions as I could. Um, there are always more questions. Um, I've still got like two pages here. Um, so eventually they'll e these will either become uh, videos that uh, you know, you'll know you see throughout the year. Um, you'll always get your questions answered at some point or, uh, or another. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Again, I wanna remind you to please um, sign up for that free presentation because there is more information about how to assess your actual body, taking a look at your body from all of its angles so that you can see how it's going to be different from any pattern that you do. And that it's gonna give you, like just enlighten you to understand how you need to change the pattern to actually follow your body. It's really not about you, um, you know, fitting into a certain pattern company's sizing chart or anything like that. It's really about understanding how to alter the pattern so that um, it works for you, okay? So let me know, how did you enjoy that? I, I'm hoping I hit lots of information for you here. Okay. So where is it we sign up for the presentation? You're gonna to go to inhousepatternstudio.com forward slash register. And you will also find the link in the description of this video. So you can do that. Uh, you can sign up anytime. I think everything should be ready for you. If you're having trouble with the registration page at all, um, just email me um, because I did set it up over the last uh, couple of weeks. So I hope that that was helpful. Okay, perfect. So thank you, thank you so much for coming today. I know we went long, but I'm hoping that it was uh, valuable to you. And I hope to see you soon. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.